So next up is Aaron Spack from Penn State University's Applied Research Lab. Uh, I've been up there a couple times. What I love about the ARL is it's hands-on, and so they're, ta they're tackling today's problems, and I know they do a lot of work with the Army on tomorrow's problems, uh, Marine Corps as well. Uh, where we focus today a lot on the transportation, moving goods around in the warehouse, how goods are stored, uh, Aaron's going to talk to you about uh, maintenance operations, how we digitalize those, and uh, excuse me, digitize those, mm -hmm. and uh, make it a little bit easier on the folks doing the hard work. Thanks. Thank you, Steve. I'd like to thank Steve's beard for inviting me uh, to speak here today. It, listen, this is a really exciting venue uh, for me because I think not only does it show how common our desire to take advantage of the latest technologies is, but not only that, we're also challenging the way we develop and adopt those technologies. So I want to talk a little bit about that in support of some programs that, that are directly helping the warfighter uh, as, they, as they do their work. So first question, uh, how many, any Penn Staters in the room? Yeah, we're everywhere. It's a, it's a big place, nearly 100,000 students across 24 campuses throughout the state. Everybody in Pennsylvania is within arm reach of a campus. Uh, of Penn State. A few things to note. Uh, we're a research machine. You know, we execute a tremendous amount of, of research, the majority of which is federally funded every year. But a few key points that are relevant to this audience and this community. Our Smeal College of Business is consistently ranked number one in supply chain education uh, by a number of different measurements. Gartner uh, released their uh, most recent assessments. Uh, we're very proud of that. And this program also delivers supply chain education for DOD. We've specifically delivered certificate programs uh, for folks at NAVSUP. Uh, we can tailor and design those programs to educate the, work, the federal workforce in supply chain fundamentals, and that's been very, very useful. Another area that I want to talk about is NextGen. And if you're not familiar with SAP's NextGen Lab program, it's part of their university alliance. And this is a co-innovation and collaboration opportunity for businesses that are starting up to gain access to SAP technology, also for educational institutions, so that they can use those technologies in their curriculum to help teach students in project-based learning environments. Well, we're proud to say that one of those has started up at our Brandywine campus outside of Philadelphia. That's new just this semester. And so far, there are three student groups in an IST, Information Sciences and Technology major, three different groups that are, that are focused on uh, projects on, uh, with DOD relevance. They're looking at using SAP's uh, analytics environments to help with wargaming analysis and courses of action impact on logistics. They're looking at route planning for transportation management. So the important thing here is they're excited about these opportunities. There's a lot of students that went to their professor and said, we want to work on programs that benefit DOD. They're, these millennials are driven by a desire to have an impact. And they see the opportunity to have an impact working in our world. And I think that's important to note. They're out there. Three of those students have already accepted internships at SAP's NS2 organization. So they're thrilled about that, uh, not nearly as much as their parents are thrilled about that. The Applied Research Lab is one part of the university, and we're actually the largest chunk of the federally funded research that goes on at Penn State. We are, are somewhat unique. You can think of us as a defense contractor attached to the university. We're 1,200 people strong. Most of us are engineers and scientists. Most have advanced degrees, and we work in a variety of different domains. We started working for the Navy in undersea weapon systems, and that portfolio has grown since 1945 to where we are today. And now those core competencies include materials, manufacturing, and logistics. That's the area where our group works. We are what's called a university-affiliated research center. That's a special designation uh, that and we've got the letter to prove it. And we have uh, what that means is, practically, is that our job is to be a trusted agent for our defense customers. We're not developing and selling technology solutions. Our job is specifically to help our customers find the best solutions to address their business challenges. That puts us in a unique position to lock arms with and partner with a lot of different uh, organizations 
to advance the state of the art of their technologies and their businesses. We also use a lot of students. So we've incorporated, we incorporate students a lot into our work and again to prepare them to enter the workforce uh, in our collective community. So I think of that 1,200 people, we have another 300-ish students at any given time working on our programs. So enterprise systems, that's our department, that's our focus area, and that's why we're here talking to you today. We work in a lot of different research areas around that universe that you can see on the slide. We maintain a systems integration lab that is designed to provide the software and computing resources to support enterprise systems research. In that environment, we have system copies of, of SAP as implemented as GCSS Army and a couple other configurations. And that allows us to very quickly be able to assess the impact of technology changes and performance on real business processes. We also have a large domain experience with condition-based monitoring and condition-based monitoring solutions. So we understand maintenance processes and procedures, and we understand how to integrate and analyze sensor data with the enterprise. And this, these environments allow us to do that. We also do a lot of operations research. We do that in support of a number of, of customers. So I'd, we are a Navy UARC, but we are not exclusive to Navy. You know, we're supporting NAVSUP, Business System Centers, a lot of operations research. We're supporting uh, the Logistics Innovation Agency in a number of other areas, and that's where our example today uh, will focus. So it was that combination of maintenance domain experience, the fact that we have the computing resources in our SIL, that we can share access and trade data with our government uh, partners, it's access controlled, U.S. citizens only. Uh, so our, our condition-based maintenance, our SIL, and our SAP experience. Those three things together let us take on this challenge in support of, of Army G4 and Logistics Innovation Agency. If you're not familiar with LIA, they're like the innovation SWAT team looking to solve the hard problems in Army logistics. And so we're happy to, to partner with them towards that goal. So what we've done here is end-to-end. -end. So Internet of Things, this is a, a version of that. We've all seen versions of this slide. But what's important here is this is connecting a platform with the data that's already resident on that platform, exposing that through an optical barcode that can be read with a handheld device. And then that data is then plumbed back through the enterprise to affect action and work order. The specific focus of this was uh, for planned maintenance inspections in a motor pool. That's the technical goal. The real, the practical goal of this whole thing, and I want to reference a, a blog post, an article by our colleague Mike Lennon that takes a contemporary look at a, a book that was written in 1950 called the, A Soldier's Load and the Mobility of a Nation. And it talks all about and we'll talk about the information load that our, our, our men and women in uniform have to carry with them when they go on deployment. This is a way to, to reduce non-value-added activity so they can focus on what really matter and free up the cognitive bandwidth and the most sophisticated computer in the world that's between their ears and do what's most important. So I can talk about this, but I think that's better done in a video that we prepared that talks about this example, tells the story of what and why we did it. The U.S. Army Logistics Innovation Agency sponsored analysis by the Applied Research Laboratory, Penn State University, to evaluate new SAP products to improve GCSS Army capabilities by increasing mobility and offering solutions for disconnected operations. The technology examined for this effort can be effective in advancing condition-based maintenance concepts while digitizing Army motor pools. Mobility features within GCSS Army address many issues with current motor pool operations while extending the wealth of information available in GCSS Army to the maintainer or operator level down to the platform outside the dispatcher's window. The technology stack SAP is proposing for disconnected and mobile operations in GCSS Army is their mobile link technology. SAP ECC exists in the current GCSS Army technology stack and forms the base of the proposed mobility solution. 
SAP Gateway provides a method to connect devices, environments, and platforms to SAP software. It is optimized to connect to SAP backends, but has connectors to support the gamut of industry standard interfaces. It supports the transformation and aggregation of backend connected services into RESTful OData services. SAP MobileLink provides the disconnected mobility solution. MobileLink aggregates data sources into a consolidated database for synchronization to client devices via sync profiles. Each sync profile stores a subset of the aggregated data in an SQL Anywhere database that is the foundation for the consuming application. Finally, the deployed application is architected around these sync profiles. SAP has opened up development of applications in a variety of native and hybrid development environments. To extend GCSS Army functionality to mobile platforms, we need an operator or maintainer to be able to access equipment records for their unit, including work orders, parts on order, open notifications, faults, and technical status. This is the data we want in each unit's sync profile. Then, we needed to architect the OData services in the gateway layer that expose the backend business application program interfaces, or BOPIs. Essentially, ARL constructed the connections in the stack from top to bottom so everything is connected. SAP provides an end-to-end -end package for this, called SAP Work Manager and ADSFW. However, that solution is licensed on a per-user basis. Extension of remote mobile link to the field would satisfy the disconnected operations requirement called Store and Forward, where a forward unit works autonomously from the enterprise systems. ARL has prototyped the following use case of this technology stack focusing on the modernization and mobilization of DA Form 5988. The currently fielded instance of GCSS Army does not access any information below the motor pool supervisor and dispatcher level, so analog data entry processes are still in place. Therefore, hard copy Department of the Army Form 5988s are printed by the dispatcher for use by maintainers, operators, or even supervisors when dispatching, inspecting, or checking on a specific vehicle. The dispatcher prints a DA Form 5988 for each piece of equipment. Once the inspection is complete, or after any use of the equipment, the hard copy 5988 is returned to the dispatcher. The dispatcher then types all updates into the GCSS Army computer. Depending on the unit, a typical weekly preventative maintenance checks and services may involve several hundred soldiers inspecting hundreds of pieces of equipment. While the dispatcher is engaged in printing or transcribing hundreds of paper 5988s, all other information exchange via that terminal is restricted. Clearly, the dispatcher is a critical link in the operation of the motor pool, who can easily become a bottleneck during the high-volume events. Allowing maintainers or operators to digitize their work would alleviate much of that bottleneck and extend GCSS Army information beyond the dispatcher's window. For supervisors or mechanics, a digital form 5988 accessed on a cheap mobile device offers a quick and on-demand reference to the unit's equipment list and shows fault notifications and work orders recorded in the system. Drilling down into a specific vehicle to learn more about each notification or work order requires just a few clicks. This provides a readily available indication of potential issues with each vehicle and a great management tool, with the added benefit of reducing the wait times and transcription errors associated with paper forms. The MobileLink technology can be deployed alongside traditional paper 5988s, giving units flexibility as they adopt the technology to suit their needs or work preferences. MobileLink technology also functions in a disconnected or offline mode. Any information downloaded prior to leaving the network is still on the mobile device while disconnected. Any additions or changes to forms that occur while disconnected are saved to an update queue and will sync when the device reconnects. As a further enhancement, we've investigated secure digital capture and automated entry of equipment data for any equipment with a data bus. Most modern Army vehicles and equipment have a data bus. In past demonstrations, such as the LIA Logistics Integration Capstone, or LOGIC, event at Fort Dix in 2015, we showed the ability to connect a wireless device into the platform Controlled Area Network, or CAN bus and move critical vault and usage data wirelessly to a network where the data can be viewed, used, and stored. At Logic, we moved the data via a secure mesh technology. However, development and deployment of a secure logistics wireless network may not happen in the near term, so we've considered an interim or alternate capability that offers many of the same benefits while being more secure. 
A digital source collector, or DSC, is attached to the platform's CAM bus via the diagnostic port. This DSC is the same device we used at Logic, modified to capture pertinent CAM bus data, and then present that data on a digital screen in the form of a QR code. The DSC presents this data within the QR code. In addition, the same information, aside from specific fault codes, is also presented in clear text on the screen. A soldier with a mobile device can scan the QR code and automatically populate a 5988 with all the appropriate vehicle identification data, as well as update the usage data and reveal any internal fault codes. This further reduces opportunities for typing errors, and in many cases, eliminates the need for manual data entry. Any observed faults or notes can still be entered manually. To ensure data quality and catch input errors, entries made on the mobile device are not ingested directly into GCSS Army. Instead, when the soldier selects Submit on the mobile device, the information is forwarded to the dispatcher. The dispatcher can then review any suggested updates and modify or delete any entry. This means a digitally submitted 5988 receives the same level of screening as a manually submitted hard copy 5988 and keeps the motor pool supervisors and dispatcher in full control of parts ordering and work order processing. MobileLink technology promises to resolve disconnected operations concerns and improve equipment maintenance visibility and tracking. This technology makes good use of existing GCSS Army information while presenting it in a more intuitive format. SAP MobileLink enables reliable use of mobile devices and offers modern tools to modern soldiers, improving equipment readiness while reducing soldier workload.